G'day, this is Carl Thompson from Storagecraft in Australia, New Zealand, and today I'm glad to be presenting to you Storagecraft Virtual Boot Technology. This is an update to SPX 6.3, which was released on the 23rd of August, and we'll be looking at what the new functionality consists of. So this virtual boot gives you the ability to rapidly boot backup images as guest virtual machines. We've traditionally supported Oracle VirtualBox, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, and with this most recent update, VMware vSphere. This gives you the ability for testing and verifying backups, complete system recovery, or system migration, V2V or P2V, etc. Virtual boot is a free feature of SPX. There's no additional cost to use this functionality. VirtualBox was released in Shadow Protect version 4 in April 2010. This gives you the ability to virtualize any Shadow Protect image into Oracle VirtualBox. In 2015, we released SPX cross platform. It includes the ability to virtual boot Linux servers as well. So, this is really great um, perhaps if you've only got an environment of physical machines or where you have um, a physical server which can utilize the VirtualBox technology perhaps. So in November 2015, SPX 6014 included the ability to virtual boot directly into Hyper-V. This requires Windows Server 2012 R2 and can leverage your existing Hyper-V environment rather than having to go for a separate server with the Oracle VirtualBox software. And now with SPX 6.3, as of the 23rd of August 2016, we now have the ability to virtualize any Shadow Protect image, whether it's Windows or Linux, directly into ESXi. This is a patent technology utilizing the VMware VIO filter that Storagecraft have done in collaboration with VMware, and it is a certified VMware ready application software. This enables you to leverage your existing VMware environments, again, without requiring a Hyper-V or a VirtualBox environment to perform virtual boot. This gives you the ability to instantly virtualize backup images as guest VMs directly on VMware ES6i hosts. You can use this for migrations, and the data is only a single hop away from the VMware server. So we're not leveraging a central management machine or having to route through an intermittent secondary appliance. The requirements for this is a VMware vSphere cluster. It must be using VMware ES6i 6.0 update 2 and VMware vCenter Server 6.02. This includes the new VMware via filter driver, which we require. Uh, as well as that, we require Shadow Protect SPX 6.3 somewhere to be running on the network, um, which will initiate the virtual boot. And as well as that, it will require the virtual boot vSphere plugin. So this can be downloaded through the wizard, or we have a, a separate download available for offline networks. Let's jump straight in and look at a demo of this. So here I have uh, SPX 6.3 install, and I'm going to go in and select Virtual Boot. You'll notice the wizard has slightly changed from previous iterations of SPX. This is just to leverage the new VMware option as well. So I'm going to go in here and click Add Image File. I'm going to select an existing destination that I have already configured. And I'm going to select any backup image in this uh, destination. Put in my Shadow Protect encrypted password. We can see here it's showing me the point in time of this backup image. At this point in time, I could add in any other volume such as D, E drive, etc. I'm going to go ahead here now and click Next. And you'll see here the options for Oracle VirtualBox, Microsoft Hyper-V, and in this instance, VMware vSphere. I'm going to click Next. And now I need to authenticate to my vSphere server. Now for this particular machine, I don't have an SSL certificate, so I'm going to uncheck that and click Log On. It is checking that and it is successful. I'm going to click Next. Now it has predefined my destination path for SMB here. This is because I already had that saved in SPX. If I didn't have that saved, it would allow me to type this in. It's obviously going to provide this information to vSphere to facilitate the virtualization. The important thing here is that SPX could be running anywhere on my network. Um, I'm doing this on a particular server, so it is going to give this information directly to VMware to perform the virtual boot. 
Now I need to go in and select the ESXi host where the virtual machine will run. So I can see here I've got a bunch of clusters. These little exclamation marks are indicating that this cluster does not have the virtual boot plugin installed. So that's okay. Um, we can still proceed and it will ask us to install that plugin. In this instance, I've only got the one host sitting here on cluster 00. So I'm going to select that and go next. And it has detected that the virtual boot plugin for this cluster has already been installed. So again, if it hadn't, there would be an option to uh, tell it to download directly from the StorageCraft website, or alternatively, we can specify a local path if we chose to download it manually. So I'm going to go ahead here and click Next, and I'm going to select the, um, I only have the one data store running here, so I'm going to select that and click Next. And now I need to give it a name. So let's go ahead and call this YouTube Demo 1. Um, give it two cores and perhaps I'll give it a bit more RAM, 4096 megabytes of RAM. And now we have the option to migrate the data drive to vSphere. So this is a really cool function. This enables this virtual boot to become permanent. So previous versions of virtual boot with VirtualBox and Hyper-V are only temporary VMs. We still at some point need to secondary migrate that back into production. So with this option, if I tick this now, it will immediately perform the migration before starting the machine. So I'm going to leave that unticked, but I am going to tell it to automatically start the machine after creating it. And I'll explain our options in a moment here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. And we can now see the virtual boot background task is running. It will even give us a bit of information on the progress of that, but it's going to take a minute or so to perform the virtual boot. Part of this will be the HIR, the Hardware Independent Restore. You can see there it's injecting the appropriate drivers to virtualize this machine into VMware. This machine was actually running in Hyper-V, but perhaps it could have been a physical server. Once it's done that, it's going to create the VM in vSphere and automatically start it. The key thing here is this is going to get us up and running extremely quickly. We're not going to wait for a full restore to happen. It's going to virtualize directly off the compressed image. Once it's running and our users are online, we can continue operating like that for, for as long as required. But at some point in time, we're going to want to migrate the data out of that backup image into the VMDK. So what we're going to do is at any stage, we can go in and perform a snapshot of that VM. And you might do that after hours, but that'll go ahead and actually convert that, the data out of the Shadow Protect backup image into that running machine. Now we can see here on the left that YouTube Demo 1 server. Let's go ahead here and jump straight onto the console. We can see here that server is now booting. So again, this is booting directly off that backup image. VMware is talking directly to the backup image. There's no secondary virtual machine or management appliance. It's not routing through my machine where I kicked off the virtual boot from SPX. It is the VMware vSphere talking directly to those backup images. So this is giving us a very speedy recovery. There's no central point of failure. We're not routing through some sort of management or reliant on an extra machine, which would further slow down this process. And again, at any stage, if we go and perform a snapshot of this VM, it will transparently migrate the data out of that backup image into this running VM to facilitate a permanent migration. So this is a really great feature. Again, it could be any Shadow Protect Windows or Linux backup. It could have been running on a physical server, a Hyper-V, a different version of VMware. This virtual boot is directly virtualizing that backup image straight into VMware. So again, my name is Carl Thompson from StorageCraft across Australia and New Zealand. Thank you for watching my demonstration today. Cheers.